we all live, eat, breathe, sleep, archery and bow hunting. Yeah. Right. So when somebody comes up and says, hey, I want to teach a bunch of people, I'm like, well, how do I get in? This should be what CPW is making people do before they get an archery tag. This should be a prerequisite. Most people, when they're trying to extend their effective range, the only thing they're thinking about is the range. You know? Yeah. Everybody stands up there and shoots at the elk at 105, you know what I mean? <laughs> they're like, I can hit it. You don't want to practice when you're in the woods. You know, if you're practicing, if you're figuring it out as you go, no, you need to f- focus on square one. You need to make sure that you've built the the house from the foundation up. We're in the problem solving business. We're trying to solve, help people solve their problems. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. This is Brandon with Wilderness Attitude Podcast. Um, we are highly warmed up and ready to roll here. <laughs> um, we just threw down 35 minutes of podcasting with no record button. Um, it seems to be a funny trend here lately in the podcasting world. I've caught a few podcasts lately where they've been re-recording because they didn't do that. And I thought, who would do that? That's why. <laughs> really? I should have never said that to yep. myself when I was yep. driving that up here. Karma. That karma <laughs> swinging. She Jinxed swung you. back. Yep. Everybody, I'm here at No Limits Archery, uh, and I've got Phil Mendoza and Bo Theory and Braden Forsyth sitting here with me and um, had the pleasure of being invited up here for uh, Phil's clinic, workshop, knowledge bomb dropping <laughs> seminar, however we want to call it, right? Um and we did a podcast about six weeks ago. I'm sure most of you have caught up to that. Um, this is a little bit of a recap to that. And I just thought that we had some more things to talk about wrapped around this uh, this event. I think that it's a, extremely important information. Um, I really enjoyed being here. My my 11-year-old son, Braxton, came with me as well and, and, and got a lot out of this uh, informational deal. And, man, I'll tell you what, I, I'm... I'm just a little bit sidetracked by the not hitting the record button, but um, <laughs> <laughs> what did what did Frozen say? Let it go. Let uh, it go. <laughs> oh, don't we? Oh. <laughs> I almost went there, but it <laughs> been really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks so much for taking the time to sit down with me for an extra lengthy podcast. Hey, all good. Thanks. And, uh, thanks for having us, man. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for sticking around and, and putting it together. <laughs> for finally getting my shit together, I mean. <laughs> hey, we were scrambling during Saturday's seminar a little bit, too. So I told you, we're bow hunters, not professionals. So well, same goes I th- true. I think that uh, when I left here on Saturday, I think otherwise. I think you guys are professionals. I think that what you guys put together and compiled and the message that you delivered and the information and and the empowerment and confidence that people left here with um, was, uh, I feel, above and beyond their expectations, if they had any, Sure. when they got here. Um, for me, I came here just eyes open, ears open, heart open. I just wanted to come, and I I feel like you can talk to anybody. You can go to any seminar. You can go just roll through a new bow shop. You can go on a 3D. You can, it doesn't matter. You can go on a hike and run into somebody. If you're paying attention, you got something to learn from everybody. Right? Absolutely. That's what we're all here for is to pass along what we know and help each other and give each other that ability to be better tomorrow than we are today. Correct. Right? Yep. Absolutely. That's kind of where this, like Phil talked about, that's kind of where this all stemmed from is, we're picking up bits of information from hundreds of people every day that come through these doors and talk to us about bow hunting and their situations and what's happened to them and what, what they've had. And we get as much from that, um, whether they know it or not, as, as they get potentially from us giving back to them. You know, we're not, mm-hmm. you know, we're not the know-it-alls. We don't know everything. Nobody can know everything in the, in hunting, but we've just, we get to, we get the opportunity to pick up a lot of knowledge from everybody and, I think that's where Phil came up with the idea, like, hey, we can, we can take that and bottle it and give it back to to people and, and yeah, help give them. It, give us some structure. Give us some yeah organization and 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 some meaning behind the information. Yeah, right. Some foundation. No, it's it, man. We uh, I mean, we fr- from from the start with with a lot of this coaching and and I guess I'll, I'll back up even further since you know the. Since we're, we're, we had a retake, right? Right. So a, <laughs> over a year ago, we started doing some workshops in here. Did some bow tuning workshops. I did a few, uh, you know, I do lessons throughout the year. Some of the guys in here do lessons throughout the year. But it, 
it really got me thinking. It's like every time we put out a workshop, we we whether we sell out or we get a lot of people come in to participate in doing it, and then we just stopped. We didn't we didn't take it. We didn't continue it. We didn't offer more. We didn't continue to seek what people were wanting. Right. And and then I started sitting back and and at the end of the year last year we we had a, our best year since I've been open. I mean, well, it's it's actually going to be nine years we're open next month. And I start looking. I say, you know what? There's more, right? There's got to be something more. There's got to be something else we can help with. There's got to be something else we can do. And and I, I started thinking, and and then it, it, I had a conversation with the sales rep. We went, we went to dinner one night after the sales rep came in, and I had already had my second booklet almost done. And we, he came in the night that I was doing a workshop. I say, hey, man, what, what do we, what, what, what are you seeing out there? What are other people doing? What, where, you know, right. what, where can we get better? And he said, stuff you guys are doing, nobody else is doing. He said, people don't, there aren't, they aren't doing that. And whether it, they don't have the abundance mentality of trying to grow everything and anything around them, right. and it's done by sharing information and fixing problems. Uh-huh. Um, and it just got me thinking because I had brought up some some pretty high profile names in that conversation. And I said, yeah, that guy would be great at this. That guy would be great at this. And then I just thought about it. I said, you know, we can't sit back in in anything and expect somebody else to take and, and carry the torch. That's right. right. Can't do it. Nope. There's There's got to be, and, and whether we just start this and we we create some structure and get it going and whether somebody else kind of, shines a bigger light on it or somewhere down the future, I don't care. That's right? fine. This is something that the, the core foundation of what we are trying to encourage people to consider is it's not the shiny object syndrome. It's not the, the magic pill. You know, right. it's if you want to get better. I mean, you know, we'll talk about the, the course a little bit from from the standpoint of when people came in the door, we, we took their bows, we, we checked their specs, we checked their, their arrow speed, their arrow weight. Um, we, we built sight tapes, we built cut charts, we built energy charts and, and all that information was compiled on four or five minutes each person, right? Right. Then we started the workshop and we started with the lecture part of it. But as we come full circle, I mean, to kind of give people a little bit of a, an overview of what happened is we started with, I would, I, I want to say it was kind of a detailed way to try to figure out your effective range, right? It's. And that's really what my second booklet was about, was how to determine your effective range. And then after thinking about coaching and structure, I was like, man, there needs to be more. So I added more to the book. And then as we're putting together this foundational course for, for the coaching, it's like, well, you need to know this because this, this leads to that. And if you don't know that, then that's why X, Y, Z, energy or distance, whatever, that's why that matters. So if we don't give you all of the information, as much as we can, I want to say all, right? As much information as we can. Right. And show you that and say, look, when you come into us with a problem, this is what we're looking at. This right. is what we're directly trying this, to figure out to help you figure out your your recipe. Right. And then from that standpoint, then we add some structure as to teaching people the different shot scenarios and situations that we've experienced, mm-hmm. that we see from a, from a, a, a constant standpoint or a, a, I would say more frequent numbers of, of opportunities it's like, look, this regularly can happen, and these situations are acceptable here and here because of this. And then we just try to tie everything together, you know. So I guess, again, from an overview perspective, it was as people want to experience growth and experience advancing in, in, in bow hunting or archery or whatever they're pursuing, and this really focused on bow hunting, right? It was a bow hunting uh, event, Work, yep. workshop, and... It's. I would say that you know we we mentioned before it what what um, the bow hunting the bow hunter red type courses or that that the parks and wildlife offer. This is kind of your 2.0 or 3.0 version of of that. Right. And it's giving you it's taking you and it's plugging you into the, the formula and showing you where your strengths and weaknesses are. You can get better here, and this is directly how to fix them. Mm-hmm. And. And that's what it was, man. I mean, it, it's just, it's very much um, what we're trying to encourage people to do is consider everything. Don't consider, don't just focus on the end goal and the prize. You need to know what it takes to get you there and what we can do to help you fix it or, or get better at it so that you can be successful. 
Well, that's a good overview, Phil. I appreciate it. And I, I think we should well, – let's jump back there a little bit again. So between the three of you, um, like we discussed earlier, I mean, you guys have a lot of years mm-hmm. of hunting. Um, and, and one thing I wanted to mention earlier as well is, is it's not just – archery hunting it's rifle hunting it's i mean think of all the times you went camping or backpacking or i mean it all it all Mm -hmm. lends a lot of time in the field that's Mm -hmm. right and so for the you guys to come together and and gather the information that you have and share that through through the course or the different courses you know um is i think that i think that but it embodies what all archery hunters should be acquiring before going in the field. Like I, I had mentioned that, and we're going to do a lot of that, I guess. Uh, we mentioned, I mentioned, because we've already done this once. <laughs> we practiced. <laughs> we practiced. We've practiced. Um, but you know, I like. I think that this. What I when I got done with your workshop the other day, I told Callie that there's this should be what CPW is making people do before they get an archery tag oh. this should be a prerequisite you know so you got hunter safety then you should have firearm safety and you should have archery safety or or you know firearm hunters course and archery sure. hunters course or however you want to label it right but i because i thought it was fantastic i mean um it i learned so much through the begin and the I, I was satisfied before we ate lunch <laughs> <laughs> you know and then yeah. you're really satisfied after really lunch, satisfied. Right? And I was really happy after lunch because my lunch was great. <laughs> um, but I was super happy before we even got to lunch because it was super cool to watch my son, Braxton, who was with us, 11 years old here doing this and seeing this and working with you guys out in the field and learning some of his accuracy and some where his max distances are and different things and, and his kinetic energies. And, I mean, just what when we, when we came back in and I was looking at the sheets that you guys were giving us off of all the stuff – you took off our bows and arrows. I was, I, I geeked out yeah. on that information. And that information gave you a, like you were talking about, gave you a great starting point for, for him and for yourself. Yep. But that's the idea I think is, is giving people, most bow hunters, new or old, walk into the shop. They don't know where they're at. They don't know their kinetic energy at 45 yards down range. They may know it, be able to calculate it real quick at point blank range, but what we're showing you is what's happening to that arrow as it's going, you know, giving you that baseline to then really start and get better or, or improve where you need to improve or adjust your system, Mm -hmm. whether it's the shooter or the setup to what it needs to be to, to increase that or, or make that more confident at that range. So that baseline that, that it gives you is, is I think invaluable. Yeah, and it's not like you're telling us what our limitations are. Right. You guys were telling us where we're at right now, what our capabilities are in our current setup and our right. current ability, right? Because it all comes down to what's behind the bow mm-hmm. in a lot of this whole format, sure. right? But it's it's it gives you that starting point. Yeah. You know, I find I find most people when they're trying to extend their effective range, the only thing they're thinking about is the range. You know, right, how how right. far can I shoot to? How far can I shoot? That's you know, I get every guy that comes in here, they're like, how far does your range go? It, it, it's not only how far can you shoot, how much energy do you have there? Yeah, I think if you've ever shot a bow, you're guilty of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. Oh, absolutely. Period. 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's why everybody stands up there and shoots at the elk at 105, you know what I mean? <laughs> they're like, I can hit it. Well, yeah. Yeah, you can, can hit it. You hit the foam target at 105, <laughs> but... How much energy is your arrow Yeah, carrying? did you kill it, it? Did you kill, did you it? kill is it, it? Is it, you know, yep. it makes sense. So, mm-hmm. I think that, uh, I mean, we, you know, you get so stuck on that. Shoot at 100, you're effective at 50. Shoot at 80, you're effective. Everybody wants to do that cut yeah. in half method. Yep. But I thought that the way you bring it to light, Phil, in your maximum, I mean, we went out and shot, 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 and really one shot, one shot check yeah. to your effective range. Where did you fall apart? Yeah. Right? And then figuring out where that two-thirds is, where that third is, and then how. It's not it, – because it's not as simple as just a 50-50 give. Mm-hmm. Right. Because then when you get in the field, is it really a real 50-50? No, yeah. it's not a real 50-50. No. Nope. You know? I liked how you broke it into thirds. Yeah. I thought that was extremely effective and, and way more – I think it gives you – it brings us back to that. It, it's easier to set your commitment level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
Fifty fifty is a fifty fifty. You're not so sure. Yeah, well, that, right? there's that I mean, yard. You're never that, sure that fud that gray area between yeah. the fifty and the the two thirds. That that's the gray area. That's yeah. where the questions come up, and that's when I would guarantee you the majority of misses, hits, bad stories come in that in that area in that, of in that middle third maybe, that zone, maybe, that maybe situa- situation or, right, or yeah. right on that 50 percent right right just yeah. above <laughs> that 50 percent line right below that right. two-thirds line of, of an individual's range you know no and I, and that's where i i even had to make sure that we just mentioned it. it's like look you know the the there's no way to know everything that's going to come about right but the way that we can try to help you formulate and cluster things and put them into an easy thing easy easy categories to remember and uh, and uh, you know I, I a lot of what i have sent at other seminars and other, at other times is just you got to eliminate the disconnect right that maybe factor that's it is mm-hmm. the devil you know yep. if if you're not sure about something like bo said it's better it's better you don't shoot if you're not sure but at the same time if you're not sure what to do next then you're just as good as not not shooting at all or not even i mean mm-hmm. might as well start hiking back right that's right so to put you in pl- in a place to where you know whether you've got an effective range of thirty, or twenty five yards, or eighty five yards, and know what certain situations you should consider within those clusters and in, in everything in between. I mean, it, it again, it lends itself to you know possibly a new shooter to where maybe they're only at twenty five or thirty yards right now, based off the, our parameters to test you. And our parameters aren't the Bible, aren't they're not the no, law, no, right? No. But they're structured, and they're, we, I, can, I can directly say the reason I'm showing you to do it this way is because of this and this and this, okay? Right. If you were to go out and pull 100 bow hunters, you're going to get 50 different, different answers as how to defect their, determine their effective range, and they're not going to have a very good, some of them may, but most people aren't going to have a very good uh, justification as to how they got to that point, mm-hmm. right? Right. So for us to, to justify it, to, to, to preface it, measure it, justify it, then test you, and then plug you into the application of what we're trying to teach you here, then it's 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 all based off something, right? Whether it's this philosophy or whatever methodology. And again, I'm not saying it's it's right or it's it's the law. It's just, hey, this is structure. This is you know, it th- this is as best as we've been able to compile to help somebody really get a better grasp and, and a well-rounded grasp of everything. You know, I mentioned before there was a, a young lady that was in in the class. And her and her husband came in, and she's not big. She's rifle hunted before, but not with a bow. Right. And she's not big game hunting. She's considering elk hunting this year. And her, her energy is on the low side. Oh, and yeah. her, her effective range, I, I think her effective range, um, she's going to have a, a, a better accuracy at distance than her energy is going to carry, is I guess right. what I'm trying to say, right? So then that's when we talked about the, we, we entered into the broadhead discussion. We added that broadhead discussion into the into the the workshop for that reason. Colorado game and fish thirty five pounds is, is the regs for for bow hunting, and whether you're twenty three inch draw or thirty inch draw doesn't matter. Recurve compound doesn't matter. So then at that point when you say, okay, well, is this young lady legal by shooting at least thirty five or forty pounds? Yeah, yep. she's legal. Yep. Is her energy lethal at thirty yards? Maybe on the light side, right? right? So then, but is she legal? She is legal. Right. So then how can we help her be as effective and efficient as she can be? Right. We, we, we focus on the broadheads. That's the next leverage point as to how she can make sure she can get the job done, assuming she can get within that, those parameters of her being ethically legal and accurate. And that's where we added that. And, you, you know, we mentioned before with your son, you know, he's he's still not legal yet for Colorado for big game. Right. For 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 Bo, But. As he starts to open his eyes and he starts to grow, and you're able to show him, hey, look, this is where you're at right now. This is where you need to get. Right. And then we can start considering maybe it's a doe at first right. or, or an antelope. And then we can probably progress in a year or two after that into elk. Right. Because you're going to be bigger. You're going to be able to pull more weight. Your energy is going to be efficient, more efficient and effective as you get bigger and older. And that's where, you know, like we had talked that it's nothing against game and fish or parks and wildlife here in Colorado. Well, but yeah, they're busy people. They got yes. a lot on their plate. Yeah, but but you, and we we talked about that before. They have a lot on their plate. They got a lot going on. Though some of these rules are archaic, and but they need people that are compiling this information, like what you guys have done, to put this in front of them. And you right. mentioned that you're going to have a gentleman here at the next yeah. seminar, right? We've got a gentleman from the Hunter Outreach Program that's going to come sit in on the on the next workshop. And if there's another two or three people in in that, you know. 
anybody in that appropriate organization or division that that I would encourage them to come sit. I would invite them to right, right, free we of have charge a seat for you. Ro- exactly, because this information we want to align ourselves next to the state organizations anywhere western based hunting because obviously e- nothing against the eastern base. It's just this is really more when your your feet are on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. That, this is a lot more that type of hunt. Can you hunt whitetail on the ground? Absolutely. But as you start getting more into the to the western style of hunting, that's where this type of philosophy and education and information needs to be needs to be presented to the masses it because it needs to be in the hands of every person that yep. plans on archery hunting. Yes. It does. Oh, absolutely. You know? yep. it, and you, you know, you'd mentioned before sometimes you have good mentors that that'll teach you this stuff. Right. And and I feel because I'm just a, I just consume information wherever I can. Like you said, you know, there's something you always got to learn from somebody yep. that whether you, you know, and I, and I allude to the top 10% or a lot with our advertisements and stuff we're talking about. We want to get you there. You may already be there. Can you benefit from this class? I think so. Absolutely. Right? Because you may just have a knack for getting into animals, <laughs> and you may be a pretty decent shot. But when you sit back and think about stuff, you're like, well, I was actually pretty lucky there, or I was pretty lucky here, and I'm just a good shot, so I, I made it work. But as far as actually having some kind of structure or basis to work off of, maybe you haven't looked at that yet. So even if it's just a little bit different perspective and it makes you even more efficient and more effective, so yes, I can guarantee it will help somebody that's already successful. Somebody that's just starting, it will help them because this is the kind of stuff that if they don't have a dad or a grandfather or an uncle or somebody or mentor that's shown them the steps. And, and, and that's the other reason I really started thinking about this coaching. There's a lot of people that come in the shop here. And they start talking with us, and they want – we get the feeling they want us to invite them hunting with us, right? Of course they do. Right? <laughs> I want you to take me. Hey, here's the deal, right? <laughs> In a perfect world, if we didn't have limited s- seasons and structures and time and family and everything else, I would love to be able to hunt with a bunch of different people. Yeah. Yeah. But because of all of our uh, lifestyles and situations and obligations, we can't do that. So what's the next best thing I can help somebody with is teaching them – what to be thinking about, what to be preparing for, and what to expect in the field. Right. And at that point, there, I don't have to walk you and, and hold your hand. And I don't want to say it in a bad way, right? But I don't, I don't have to do that in the field if you're a new hunter. I can teach you a lot of that stuff beforehand. And I can, I can show you what to expect, what to, what to look for. And when you do get into that situation, you have already have thought about it. You have it written out. You have it, you know, ingrained into your mind to where you don't have that, you know, and I mentioned in the, in the seminar, the fight or flight or freeze, right? You don't have that freeze possibility or, or option happening. Now you're moving past it. You've made a decision. You've made a commitment to focus back on your structure and your system to keep you plugged into the equation. And hopefully, maybe you, maybe you don't tag out, but you've gotten that much closer to being able to well, tag out. even regardless, if, you're, if you can have a, a breakdown and then come back to ground zero right. and start again, you were successful. Yeah. Yep. I, I think that needs to be said. Any, anything you know. that allows you to kind of step back for just a moment and slow yourself down and really think about your situation and what's going on, you're just going to benefit from mm-hmm. it. Like when we watched your deer hunt, Brady, mm-hmm. it's like even, ha- even if you'd have missed that deer, you had a successful stock. Right. 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 I mean, you, you did not harvest, but you had a successful stock and a successful hunt, so to speak, in my mind. Because you had things change on you. You had scenario. You had to change, regroup, change. Yep. And, you, and you were able to capitalize on the situation and make that. But that deer was a part of that equation, right? Right. But even if he had checked out of that equation, you still did a mental process, a physical process, and, and did it multiple times successfully. And sometimes that's what a lot of men and women need to do and children. They need to go through those steps in order yep. to do it. Like I told you, I had shots that I should have took. I had elk that should be dead, but I had to work through the process. Mm-hmm. I disconnected. I thought to myself, I can't do this. Yeah. Yep. I got to get closer. No, you don't. <laughs> you, you, I didn't need to. Right. Um, I allowed myself to break down and talk myself out of my commitment. And find an excuse not to make of what I know is it was a good lethal shot. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. good shot. Good opportunity. So. Yeah, that's that's it. And that's where w- the way we've kind of structured the course to, to encourage people to start with the effective range and then progress into clustering it. And then from there, organizing it, 
to develop confidence. Because like you said, if you find yourself in that situation where you say, well, man, 35, 40 yards, that's my, my, my two-thirds range. That's, I'm in that range. And you know that that potential opportunity that's about to unfold, you've already thought about it. Yep. You're you're more confident now. That's right. You're not wondering. There is not that maybe factor's not in there anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it's this is what I am prepared for. That's right. And you can hopefully step up to the plate and execute that. It keeps you from kind of flying by the seat of your pants kind of thing, you know, where you you're like, "Oh, okay, it's here. Now what do I do?" Yeah. You know, you we've right. worked through that here in the class where everybody you know, is sitting there going, Oh, hey, I might have seen that in class, you know. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do right now, I have a, you know. Yeah, I have a prime freeze moment. I got up one of my first times ever by myself elk hunting, okay. Got up. Everybody always told me, well, you know, if just before light, do a locate bugle and see if there's any bulls around. So I did a locate bugle, nothing. I walked just over this knoll just a little bit, let out another locate bugle, and this bull freaking was right there i mean he wasn't 40 yards in front of me and when i bugled he ran straight at me like he was coming to get me man <laughs> but it was still i could just barely make his silhouette i mean it was still yeah. dark almost right i could barely see the silhouette and he ran at me and ran on this to the left of me only four yards from me on the other side of this oak brush and i stood there going oh shit oh shit, oh shit. What do I do? you what thought do I do? you were done what for do do? what do i do what do i do i was froze i was like i couldn't move i just stood there yeah i just stood there like a statue <laughs> and i'm like okay he needs to go back up where he was at and then turns broadside and then i'll shoot him up there <laughs> right but he was so close to me and there was a point where i actually turned my head and r- i could have shot right over the oak but i mean he was right there i yeah. could i could have wailed him yep and he couldn't even <laughs> see me where his head was yep. and he didn't smell me yet but it was before legal shooting light, but all this, which is important. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, but I had that freeze moment and then it happened to me. I froze four or five times before I got to a 40 yard shot and I still didn't take it. Yep. So I thought coming out of this, it was, it was neat. Like you're saying, you got, you, you're going to figure out your distance. You're going to figure out your situation, your animal, your elements, your, I mean, there's so many things that go into us executing a, a, a good decision. Um, but the class, in in the end, I think people need to come. CPW needs to come. Whoever needs to come, whether it's even a private organization that that does that does hunter safety classes or whatever, they should come. They should check it out because I think that it it will empower people to make the right decisions, and the right decisions are what's best for the animal. Right. Right. Yep. Hundred percent. And that's even more so as we kind of project it outside because a lot of times. You leave a. I've, I've been to seminars and workshops and stuff, and you leave there and you're just jazzed up, right? Motivated. Absolutely. You want to implement mm-hmm. something. You you've seen so many things, but then, what's next? Mm-hmm. Right? What's next? Well, Eric asked that question when we were at the, end of the yeah. seminar the other night, right? He said, yeah. "Well, what's next? Where, where do I do with this? How do I go from here?" Yeah. And and with Eric's specific situation, it's it's he's got many uh, paths to move forward in, right? I think so because. He's got his equipment from one standpoint. He can he can fine tune his equipment. He can change a few things and be a little bit more effective right. and, and efficient there. He can improve himself with his accuracy, right? He's got a baseline. He knows what he shot and what distance he was shooting. So now he can measure himself against that and directly try to project growth. So that's another thing he can he can get better at. And then the third thing is is practicing that situational bow hunting more. It's like all it's three. It's a three headed monster, and right. it's not just for it's for anybody. Yeah, you know there was a couple guys in here that we, we because of time we cut them off at like eighty or eighty yards or so, and they were still in the kill zone. You yeah. know, yeah. And those guys, it's like were they would they have felt fallen off at ninety or hundred? Who knows, right? Their effective range is going to probably be limited more so from an ethical standpoint or than an, an element standpoint or an element right. standpoint. That's exactly right. So, but. Being able to structure it and present it and say, look, guys, yes, you can shoot the lights out. And that's great because I tell you that that's pulled me, that's filled some tags for me that it wouldn't have in some situations. Because, and, and Aaron, a good friend of ours, he's mentioned it. He's like, I would rather shoot an animal at 50 to 70 yards because they don't know it on there. And they don't know the arrows coming at them. Mm-hmm. And if you can, but if you can look at all options, organize the situations, cluster them, and say, okay, I'll only take this shot in this situation if X, Y, Z all align. Okay, you know. But anyway, those 
you know, that going back to that, that there, there's, it's just about, man, it's about awareness. It's about being confident. It's, it's about deliver, go walking into the field. And I, and I mentioned this weekend, you don't want to practice when you're in the woods. You know, no. if you're practicing, if you're figuring it out as you go, that, that fake it till you make it comment, it's, it's garbage, right? That whole thing is, no, you need to f- focus on square one. You need to make sure that you've, you've built the, the house from the foundation up, right. you know. And if your foundation is weak, then as you start to get to certain situations that get a little bit more advanced or whatever the case is, then you're going to buckle. You're going to fall, yep. you know. And, and it's happened. I mean, we're not perfect. We're not coming from a standpoint of, of uh, you know, the iron fist and that kind of stuff. It's, it's from a standpoint of some of us have made these mistakes. Not all of us have made the same mistakes. But there's enough customers that have come in the door that we can focus on a specific situations or certain mistakes. And we know this happens a lot. Right. And you can get past that by this. You can, we, can, we can help get around this by that. And, you know, again, just going back to the structure, of, that's why we kind of structured the Alpha Pyramid the way I did because the first building block is very basic. Understand your equipment. Is that class for everybody? No. You may be beyond that, okay? Mm-hmm. Your, basics, your, uh, your basic understanding of archery knowledge might be past that. Okay. Then we get into the second portion of our, our building blocks, which is at the, the base level, the foundation level, that gets more into the target panic and the buck fever and the anxiety and the mental approach using a tension release, understanding where a shot should fire from, practice routine. You know, I talked about the about how I feel people should be practicing in the off season from a confidence standpoint. Right. You know, why aren't you starting up close at three to five yards for your first three to five shots or seven shots and making sure that form is good, that you're finding your anchor points properly, that you're, ex- you're push-pulling through the shot, you're squeezing the, the shot off right, you're not punching the trigger. And then you get to a high high percentage shot start at 10 yards at a, at a two inch dot a three inch dot make sure the arrows are hitting in there that's right you know the guys that walk out of the range and they might walk out to 60 or 70 yards to take their first shot what if it's a little bit windy out there right on their first shot and now they're not just them moving now they've got the additional elements that are moving around that is a wind and they just jammed their finger on that trigger and made that shot go off at a certain time they just started their practice routine off punching the trigger yep and guess how they're going to continue with that practice <coughs> yeah. situation, right? That's the same thing I've always preached on this podcast. I mean, even for my my children and whatnot. Like when we when we warm up, I tell my kids that for the whole month they they are they are blind bailing. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to start them yep. for the whole month, and they just look at me like they hate me. Uh-huh. And I'll go out there and they'll blind bail, blind bail, and the minute I leave, they're out to twenty yards. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But, they- but yeah, I know they're always. But you know, I'm always like, you know, blind bail, and the next month we're going to ten for two weeks, and twenty for two weeks, and thirty, you know. And then I make them get in their camo and go out there and shoot on their knees and shoot this and yeah. do that. And then I'm always trying to get them to go out and come out. Let's go out. It's gonna. It's windy. No, I don't know. You, know, you, yeah. get, you think it's always gonna be perfect when it's always gonna be perfect weather when no. you take a shot. And, yeah, yeah, but it rarely is. You know, not. But I think that. What I was thinking a few minutes ago when you were talking, Phil, is is that this is not one man's collective of information. We mentioned that a little bit before. <clears throat> yeah, you're just the delivery guy, right? right? I mean, this is this is a a collective yeah. of hundreds and hundreds of men and women yeah. and hunters, new and old, and experienced in the field. That's been calculated, dated together, and you're j- you just organized it, right? And you're the man delivering it. Right. Because some people would be like, oh, well, what, you know, well, I mean, what is, I'd rather learn from this guy, or I'd rather learn from this guy, or I'd rather learn from this individual. And what they need to realize is that within the Alpha Pyramid, this this pyramid has thousands and thousands of people's right. input into what is being taught here. Yeah. This isn't Phil's way. Right. Right. right? We, this all, is we all learn from lot. each other. Right. We all learn from each other. So, we you know, and I just think that that's important for people to know because some people get stuck on that gig yeah. right like well you know what does he know you know you got haters out there be like well what makes him so special to teach this class well right. he's just delivering you the information from thousands and thousands of people right yeah. you know when you buy this online because you can't come to denver for these you know that you're getting immense amount of hours and missed opportunities success failure strife yeah. information all put into a yeah. format that's easy to understand and learn yeah, I we mean, get. I mean, you know. go ahead, Braden. We got the. I mean, like I said, we've got the opportunity of hundreds and hundreds of people through these doors every day. 
um, talking about archery, talking about hunting, talking about, and we're, we're gathering information from them just like they're coming to get information from us because we haven't covered every story. We haven't been there. We haven't right. seen every variety of everything. And to hear different stories and apply, you know, Phil just was smart enough to, to take it and put it into a system that, that yeah. we can apply now to, to certain situations and hopefully turn those one the stories we come in here that are unsuccessful into trophy pictures and you know i thought your campus mindset of this facility lends to that you've got this mega outdoor mega indoor you've got you've got every opportunity you need for shooting a bow around here right, right. plus the staff and the facility and the products and everything to to help facilitate yeah. anything you want as far as you want to go in this in the sport or or where industry whatever you want to call it but as a campus that also resonates to me that this is a, this is a learning center, right? Yeah. Right. This is this is all these people, all this stuff, and yeah. this is where you come. And you know, like what you did up here, Phil, with this top floor, and and what you, you know, and how you organize yourself to deliver this. It was extremely professional, w- way above my expectations, and I thought that it was, uh, I, I thought it was awesome. Uh, we appreciate you know? it, and it's something that that these guys know. They they know that. I'm pretty ambitious, and I joked around earlier about a lot of times I'm throwing so many irons in the fire that that they're having to pick up the the pieces as I'm walking away because half the time I haven't thought everything through. Right? <laughs> I'm just like, we need to do this, we need to do that. But you're a man. What? <laughs> but but this 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 here has been seriously. I from from as I I look back from since over a year ago when I I wrote the first that book, the Target and Buck Fever. And then I wrote it, I, the second one, the shoot or don't shoot, the, the one that's going to be coming out here in a couple of weeks. That one really started framing the coaching structure more for me. So as we're starting to directly target moments of disconnect for a bow hunter, right? And everything we're doing. And then, and then I said, so with this, I've carried a higher confidence level and energy level because – it's man. I mean, I've been I've been beating the horse with it, right? And and these guys, they're starting to 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 as I'm bringing them on and to help me to relay sort of these messages and, and doing different components of the of the workshop and the classes and the stuff we do at the shop here. Then I'm I'm tweaking things because they're like, yeah, that's good, but you know this, and I was like, yeah, okay, like the broadhead situation. We talked about the broadhead edition. Right. The, we want to do this or not? Right? Yeah. <laughs> we want to even go down this rabbit well, hole. <laughs> and th- there are certain things that they come to me with a great idea. I was like, man, that's a great idea, but we need to tweak it a little bit more because I, I try to be my own worst critic sometimes. So going back to the, the coaching structure, it's something that this is going to be a fluid situation. I, I mentioned it. There's people that came into the workshop that have bought some of the cl- courses already, and they additionally came to the class, to, to the workshop even though some of the information was similar, a lot of it's most of it was new. But it, I said, I've added more videos. When was the last time you guys were on there? Ah, it's been a week, two weeks ago. I was like, I've added more videos. I added more pieces, you know. That. Yeah. And and I've fixed a couple of videos because I didn't like the way that it was articulated the first way. It was good, but now it's way good, right? Yeah. And it's it's because of interaction with these guys, interaction with the customers, proofread or, or editing the booklet again, right? So right. I, I've just. I'm continually grinding and molding this. So this is something that it's only going to get better, right? I, I truly believe that where we started here on Saturday, we're, and, and I, I was happy. I mean, the feedback we've gotten from it, the messages on social media, the, the private messages, that, that's the biggest thing. When, right. when somebody says, when somebody goes out of their way and they send you a private message and they say, look, I really appreciate, appreciate what you guys did because of this and this and this. And they give me a story or something happened or, or how they, they're they able to connect the dots. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's that's what we're all looking for when we were first starting, you right. know. Yeah. Right. So those messages have been, been awesome. But I can promise you that, again, the energy and the, the commitment to what we're doing here, it's, it's just starting. Because this this message, this lack of, this gap of, of information that is in the bow hunting world right? right you can go get equipment anywhere you can go get set up anywhere some people are going to set you up better than others and you can get a lot of tech talk you, you can get a lot of that all over the place yeah you, i mean and then you can go to somebody super high level you can go like and i mentioned you can go to george rouse you can go to john dudley and they're going to tell you where to position your elbow and how the anchor point's different here and this and that we can teach you that too those guys are high profile guys right but what about all the meat in between the meat and potatoes in between the sandwich right, right. i mean the, the meat and the, the the cheese and everything in the middle of the sandwich everybody wants to focus on the 
the fancy, you know, the the, the flashy the stuff. flashy stuff. I, man, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. You know, I, right. I'm I'm a hard I'm a hardworking guy that I think just is really focused on the structure and the foundation. And then once people get this part of it built into their to their toolbox, then they can go say, "Man, I went and had a a private lesson with X Y Z coach." And now I know I can directly af- improve my accuracy because I've measured it, tested it with with the alpha system and this, and and Im- Im- implemented right. it. Now I'm ex- ex- exceeding my growth potential. Well, in this kind of this kind of classes, and that's why I keep I'll always say it needs to be a CPW thing. Yep. If you want hunter retention, then you need to give them the foundations of what the hell they're doing. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, they go out and if they fail, they blame the bow or they blame this or they this or that, and I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, forget this crap. But if they can understand why they fail and why they're successful, then that that it has meaning. All right. It has a place in your life. If it's empty, that's why people give up. Right. Yep. So you know I, that's why I would encourage people to do it. We're, I know? mean, we're just trying to to give everybody as much information to increase their potential for success. That's right. You know, which is what everybody strives for anyway. You know, nobody goes out into the woods, ex- you know, wanting to fail. Okay, or even on the yeah. target range, of you know, course. everybody yeah. wants to go everybody out wants to, to hit su- foam. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to go out and succeed, you know, and if we've right. got a little bit of, t- you know, information that we can go ahead and, and give to you that helps you step forward and, and get just a little bit better. I mean, we all have our strengths. Absolutely. You know, we we all feed off of each other and try to help build this system. Right. Um so when he first came up, I remember at ATA. Yep. He said, "What do you think?" Yeah, what do you think? And I was like, I'd be all in, dude. That's right, my alley. I would love to have more information. Get, give, yeah. give it. You know, and I thought it was a great idea. So since then, I mean, has he been a total pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> since he's got this whole thing going? <laughs> I mean, like you said, you got all these irons in the fire, and they're picking up all the pieces behind you. <laughs> Did you guys, when he came back from ATA, and he had this gung ho attitude, were you like, oh, good lord? Uh- I mean, what are we doing? speaking specifically for myself, um, no. I mean, no. we all live, eat, breathe, sleep, archery right. and bow hunting. Yeah, right. I, so when somebody comes up and says, hey, I want to teach a bunch of people, I'm like, well, how do I get in? You nice. Know? You know, we, we're, we're all here specifically, our campus. Um, you know, for us, we try to be, you know, kind of almost like a family, you know, right. and, and, and group together and bounce ideas off each other. And, uh I just I think it's awesome. I, yeah. You know, when he comes up and he's like, "Hey, man, I've got this idea on a, a bow tuning class or arrow building or something," I'm like, "Dude, that's that's my gig." Yeah, like, that's, that's right up my alley. That's right. yeah, that's where I get right. geeked out. And you, you know? love when you hear when you oh, when you hear him say that. You're like, "Boom, it's done." <laughs> yeah, but that's <laughs> right? you know, and that's a long time coming from the culture of people that I've tried to surround myself with. Right. Because the knowing that I can come to work and it's not like work. It's like it's like hanging out with your brothers and you're talking about stuff and you're you're really just trying to like I said we're we're here we're in the problem solving business. We're trying to solve help people solve their problems. And knowing that I can look to to my right or my left and I don't have to convince anybody, "Hey, I really need you to help with this." No, I I really need your help with this. No, I'm going to say, "Hey, this is what we should try to do. Wh- what do we need to do? Right. Well, how can I help? Where can we where, what do we need to put together for this?" It's it. That's the type of culture of people. That's where, that's why Bo and I have worked so well together over the last few years. Braden coming on this year, he was an easy plug-in because I've hunted with him for the last few years. And when when we came and we started talking about Braden coming on staff and, and working with stuff, I said, I, I'm in. You know, yeah. what do we need to do to make right. it work? Right. Because that type of culture to help these kind of things work. If I have to work extra hard to relay a certain message or certain how, how it needs to come across, then it's a problem, right? I sat down with these guys the, the day before as, as I'm still kind of feeding them information. It's like, hey, you, we're, this is what we're going to do at this time. And I just, I, I didn't finish the sentence yet, and they almost finished it for me. It's like, okay, uh, we're good. All right, you guys handle that, you know? <laughs> right. So it's... it's um, so you don't have to micromanage. No. Because you guys have the same end goal, right? Yeah. In the same mindset. Pretty I'm, much, I'm yeah. the giddy up guy, man. Anything he says, I'm like, giddy up, let's go. Yeah, we're, right. we're on it. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's been fun because it's, uh, like I said, everybody, 
uh, it's not even like people know their roles and they know what they do. No, we're all part of the same team. We're all part of the same group of of very similar like minded you know individuals. That it's yeah. I mean, I look at something. It's like man, I want more. Right? We need to deliver more. We need to we need to be able to showcase more. And it and it shows with this stuff here. And I guarantee you, if we all went after hours and we went out on the range and everybody had their bows. We're, we're all trying to kick each other's tail, right? right. <laughs> so it's it's from that competitive mindset that we all feed off of, that we all are very similar. Right. And and now when 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 I throw something a task like this in front of everybody, I know that it's they're as aggressive as I am with wanting to make sure it works. Right. And then you throw my wife in the mix. My wife is somebody that she's always been behind the scenes, you know, and and she is as cr- critical and crucial to what's going on here that. And these guys don't see it all the time, but I'll be at home, and I'm on the computer, and I'm trying to outline something or trying to get an email out, trying to, you know, get the videos uploaded for whatever I'm doing. And she, you know, she she looks at me, and she knows that I, I'm busy working on something, whatever the case is, and something she takes care of it, right? And then when she's done taking care of that, she comes back and, okay, well, how many booklets do we need to order? How much, you know, what do we need to get put together? What do we need to organize? So she's essentially making sure I'm staying in line. Right. So it's everybody, right? It's everybody here, and it's, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I, I feel blessed to, to be yeah. here right now. And you should be. I mean, I mean, even from my perspective, being here the other day, watching these guys work around you and as your team work and your wife taking orders and food and doing this, and, you know, she's able, she's, She's wrangling you, wrangling yeah. kids, wrangling 24 people's food orders. And yeah. I don't think anybody had a messed up order. And, I mean, it just everything, it was seamless, yeah. you know, and it was. It was it was pretty awesome. Um, and I think that uh, I, I think the number one thing coming out of this podcast is, is that, you know, this isn't necessarily an infomercial. This is just us talking about how you as archers need to take this lead understand the role that you have for the animal and realize this information is here for you right. and that it, that, and that is, and, and I'm telling you as my listeners that, you know, for me, um, I don't know everything. Phil doesn't know everything. Nobody knows everything. But when I walk in here, it's genuine. It's not, you know, there's nobody here posing. There's nobody here talking out their butt. There's nobody here yeah. overstepping what they, what they know, or feelings or indifferent and it's just genuine delivered quality information yeah. and so i'm encouraging people to get online and and go check out what you're doing I, um, yeah, we appreciate it you know i mean from the very beginning of us talking about this to doing a few podcasts and me being here and different things and getting to know you i mean you know it's uh it's been a pleasure the whole road the whole journey has been a pleasure up till now well, and, I, and i'm looking forward to it and i'll tell you i'm super psyched about the whole Arrow building gig, yeah, like that's like I'm, I'm right on that deal. Yeah, that's I'm that's the next that. online course that that's going to be coming out, and it's uh, it's something Bo, Bo and I have talked about for over a year. Yeah, right? it's been a long time. And yeah. and to even the tuning class, the tuning class that we just put up is is a is a 1.0 kind of 1.0 to 2.0 type of st- structure on the tuning because. We can sit here, and, and Bo and I know that, that we've worked on as many bows as anybody, right? I mean, we've we've sat and, and, and racked our brains sometimes over certain bows because it's like we've done X, Y, Z, this, and this, and this. This should work, and something just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Or it's like you work on another bow, and it's like that shouldn't have worked, but that worked, you know? <laughs> but, you know, the, the great thing about that, though, is, you know, because we have been doing that, so long and, and you know you myself jason even one of the other guys we have here at the shop you know there'll be some days where i'm at home not at the shop just hanging out with the family and i'll get a phone call and be like hey and we start bouncing ideas off each other yep. and rarely ever do we have a bow that, that we, we can't, can't figure fix, out right. yeah we can't figure out but rarely ever yeah, is there when we can't figure so out so that's like when i'm looking for a mechanic yeah. It's like, I don't care if I have to pay you $125 an hour to work on my car, but you better be a good diagnostic mechanic. Right. I need you to figure out my problem, not throw parts at my car, right. not yeah. tell right. me I need right. a new right. sight because exactly. right. right. I can't shoot straight. Right. You need a new don't release. You need a new release. All this the crap, new things right? are released. And Everyone that's the beauty of it, right? Is like, you know, like Phil and I, we've had that conversation where you were like, no, I, you're not spending <laughs> the $200. No, what you have is fine. We, we're going back to the beginning here because it's it is not maybe it's you maybe it's not you give me your bow yeah let me yeah. go let me see 
you know, let me see what I got to work with. And you diagnose it and you figure it out. And I think that's, I think that's priceless. Yeah, that's, that's where these guys joke around sometimes. Cause I, and it's, it's been not so much lately, but I, I've been my own worst sales guy sometimes. You know, right. Same thing. Somebody <laughs> comes in, I want to buy that. And then I start talking to them about explaining them the product. And as I'm as they're giving me, I'm I'm listening to them as I'm kind of explaining things. And I start to realize what I'm explaining isn't necessarily what's going to fix what they're looking for. Right. And then by the end of the conversation, I say, "Well, that's probably not what you need." And I'm, well, what do you mean? You know, I I, I got two hundred fifty bucks in my pocket. <laughs> here, it's right here, killing me. <laughs> right here. Here. And and it's like, why don't you just change your peep sight? What do you mean? Well, I think it, this is what's your problem. And it's a five or seven dollar fix, right? Yeah. And then it's and, and they say, oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, well, peep you know, and then I just made three dollars on a peep site sale as opposed to <laughs> making whatever on. The, but anyway, it's right. it's that type of attitude that we have in here. We really want to help somebody fix a problem, and I think that's why we've grown as much as we have over the last four or five years. Because, um, and and I've made th- th- like you said, everybody's got haters, right? I have been lucky. I don't have a lot of haters. The few times I have, my comment to a lot of them are like, you know where I work. You know where I, you know what my business is, my, you know what my hours are. I'm not trying to hide. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. This is where I plan to be for a long time, right? And if I made a mistake, I'll tell you I made a mistake, right? But at the same time, it's never intentionally to to to, to fool somebody or to trick somebody, right? So because we made mistakes, I, oh, yeah. I'll be the first look, one to say it. Look, and you know that's true because I think the bottom line to the whole alpha deal. The whole bottom line to this campus, the whole bottom line to how who you surround yourself with as friends and employees is, is that no limits, Phil Mendoza, Braden, Bo, the Alpha yeah. deal, they want you to be successful. Right. And successful means every day. No. Right. Yeah. Not just a short term fix, not just whatever. It is successful. And if and if you can make someone successful in something that makes them happy, that'll carry over into success and happiness in other places of their life. Yep. It just keeps rolling through. Confidence right? brings confidence, right? That's right. It continually grows and if you get real confidence, it helps with everything. So That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, gentlemen. I know we talked about this on the last one, the the other one we the re- practice the, other, one? the practice podcast. Yeah. Bo, what's up, man? We gotta talk about it. You no, can't get away from it. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> you're sticking a knife in my side now. <laughs> so let's let's okay. So everybody's got a a, a a Monday saying. So Phil, what's your what's your Monday saying for today? Your words of encouragement for today. Man, you know what? I'm gonna have to think about that one. Okay, anybody, I might need a pass. Ready? Um, oh, I had a good one, but mine I, was good. Mine was easy this morning. Get outside and start your week off right. Yeah, it's good. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. That, that was a simple one. But we are—we all know what Bose is already. We're just not—we're just gonna wait for him to say I it. I did. Uh, I was actually going to post it, but I don't have a good video of it. But when I was in Hawaii hunting a couple of weeks ago, like I have a bucket list to jump off a cliff in a jungle, and I got to do it. And I was gonna put the video up and say jumping into Monday like. But the video's terrible. The quality's <laughs> terrible. And you can't even tell it's me. I'm like, oh, they're just going to think I stole it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, well, you're going to make me tell the story. No, you don't have to tell the whole story. Just what's your Monday words of advice? Well, my words of advice is when, uh, when you need to apply for a hunting license, make sure you have a valid driver's license. Because <laughs> uh, Parks and Wildlife doesn't accept a... Uh, Expired, ta- you know, expired. But lessons. apparently TSA did. TSA. But apparently TSA does. Yeah, TSA is great. I, I love, I love those guys there. So just so everybody knows, CPW's level of security is higher than TSA. I want everybody to feel confident in that. <laughs> yep, yep. Like, oh man, F- flew in and out of two different airports with all my hunting gear, and yeah, I actually made it home with an expired driver's license. But I can't get a hunting license here in the state of Colorado. <laughs> Well, we're secure then. <laughs> <laughs> At least the animals are right The animals now. are secure yeah. for sure. <laughs> get that. Phil, parting words? Man, you know what? I'm gonna just, I posted a video today on Instagram about one of the things that I really try to hammer, and winning's important, right? And we're, as outdoorsmen and bow hunters, we're just lucky that our journey doesn't suck in that whole process. That's right. Because... There's a lot of things that you can do in life that the journey sucks. 
and and the the process of getting to the end goal sucks. Bow hunting doesn't, man. Bow hunting, getting to hang out with guys like this, you know, and 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 enjoy that the the scenery and the, embracing what it takes to get things done. But I still think that you need to have your goal set, man, and focus on that end goal. That's yeah. that's kind of what I where I'm at. That's where I've always been at. So I like it. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Shouts out. Anybody you want to shout out? Thanks. Yeah. To, thank the girlfriends, the wives for. Oh, Brandon always. not hitting always. the record button. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm, I should thank my, them. My phone's been vibrating over no, here. I'm not. I got one more thing to it. say too. Hey, <laughs> and, and just appreciation because you guys have always been good with us too, Brandon, and, and the listeners. Uh, the first podcast we did, I had a bunch of people that reached out, and I sent them that free audio book. Right, we gave them an offer that last time. I said, right. you, if you guys are interested, I want to, you know, I'm going to give you a little little extra. And and with the online courses and everything we've got right now. The the structure is still growing, but most of the information is out there that we have. Um, anybody that wants to look at our online courses, go to alphabowhunting.com, go to the coaching tab, and follow the link over. Enter WA Podcast, all in caps, and I'm going to give you an extra 10% off of that, you know, just as, as a token of appreciation because, like I said, so much of what our issue is with this isn't the message or the content. It's the obscurity that pe- not enough people know about it. That's right. right? So as – to try to get more people out there and, and uh, exposed to it, you know, an extra 10% off, I'd be happy to throw that out to your, to your listeners. And just Thank know, you. Yes, we, we've got April 21st is our next workshop, all-day workshop. There's only a couple spots left. We're going to open another date in May. And then um, this is something we're looking to grow. This is something that we're looking to, whether we go to some other location and do something, you know, workshops like this, as long as the the, the location is fitting for us to be able to deliver the message like we need to, right? We'll definitely consider doing it too. Excellent. Well, we've also, got, if there's yes, we've got a lot more ahead. information too coming coming down the line. So, yeah, looking forward to as far as growth goes. So we, we scratched the surface with with these all day ones, and we've got more branches to that tree to grow. So, well, listeners, if you're interested in what we've been talking about, definitely go on the Alpha Bowhunting site, alphabowhunting.com, yep. and go hit the link. Go get your 10% off. Reach out. Send these guys a message. Let them know where you heard it. We just appreciate that because, you know, we're we're all trying to help each other be better than yesterday. And that means, you know, even as business businesses or friendships or hunters, we all are always trying to help each other out. And so also, you know, take advantage of the fact that if you are a bow shop somewhere and you have a facility that can that might be able to facilitate something like this, that might be a good place for phil and the crew to come and present this to some some your local archers that are interested reach out send them and send them an email and see if your venue could be a possibility who knows maybe they want to go to new zealand have Bo will travel right Bo will travel (laughs) (laughs) maybe they want to do a seminar in new zealand or somewhere you know really cool who knows we got a few listeners there yeah our 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 (laughs) arms are always open and and I, I love going to other bow shops too, by the way. And if there's any information, any questions you have, you always can hit me with an email. You can hit 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 Alpha with an email. Yeah, Phil at No Limits Phil. Archery is my main email. There you go. So hit me up. Yeah, ask questions. That's, That's what it. we're here for. That's right. Yep. Everybody, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, a little shout out to Ultimate Predator. Uh, go check them out on Instagram. This has been filmed by Ultimate Predator Cameras. And... Uh, and also powered by one of their power packs. And so we really appreciate those guys. Great people to work with. I don't know if you've ever used an Ultimate Predator decoy, but they're sure a lot of fun, even if you're not successful. Uh, <laughs> I find them fun, but and my kids think they're cool to hide behind. So, um, Cool. Yeah, we dig it. Thanks, you gentlemen. All right, appreciate thank you. It. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Later.